Um, Principal Secretary Pradeep Chandra, you distinguished other delegates, ladies and gentlemen, very happy to be here. It's a pleasure to be at this um, 11th edition of BioAsia. Thank you for the invitation. Um, and congratulations on what I'm sure will be another successful conference. Australia's uh, research facilities, world-class scientists, and strong but flexible regulatory regime have made Australia a world leader in biotechnology and pharmaceutical innovation. As many of you would be aware, we changed government um, recently in September last year. And our Prime Minister in his uh, opening night victory speech said that Australia was under new management and open for business. So a key message for the Australian government to India and other countries is that um, he's committed to doing the sorts of business friendly activities, the continued economic reforms that have made Australia a very strong global performer for the last few decades. Um, already in India, our bilateral economic investment is very strong. India is our fifth largest export market and we do already over $17 billion worth of trade and investment with India. Indian companies are investing in Australia. 10 billion went into our economy last year, including local Hyderabadi companies such as GVK and Tech Mahindra. It's worth taking a moment to consider why Australia is such an attractive business partner for India. We've got a strong economy which has been driven by continuous reform over the last 30 years. We've been growing without recession for, this is our 23, 23rd year. We've been um, tagged by the IMF recently as expected to outperform all, all other advanced economies until at least 2018. We've got a proven track record and commitment to world-class research and development. Seven of our 39 universities are ranked in the top 100 in the world. 19 of our 39 universities have some presence or other in India supported by all sorts of research and development resources as well, including over $100 million that the Australian and Indian governments have put in to continue to grow that research and development effort, including in areas of biotech. We're strategically located in the dynamic Asia-Pacific region. We possess a highly skilled, multilingual, multicultural workforce. If you look at India, for example, we've got 110,000 people in Australia speaking Hindi, 71,000 speaking Punjabi, 34 speaking Gujarati. India is the fastest growing migrant community in Australia. The Indian students are the second largest group of international students in Australia, of which we get about 400,000 a year. So those connections are deep and growing including in, this, in the area that this conference is all about. Um, the investment trajectory, the trade trajectory, is symptomatic of the broader Australia-India relationship, an interest, a relationship where our interests are converging, our geostrategic interests. Based in the dynamic Indo-Pacific region, which recognises the profound shift in economic and strategic gravity that's now taking place towards this region. We've already got solid partnerships in trade and investment flows in the biotechnology, life sciences and healthcare sectors, and there's much more ground that we think we can break and make in India. In 2010-2012, our biotech industry generated $7.5 billion worth of revenue domestically and internationally. Our companies specialise predominantly in human th therapeutics, agribiotech and diagnostics. We're noted for a number of significant contributions in biotechnology and health, including the discovery of the cured effects of penicillin, the development of the cochlear implant, synthetic omega-3 fatty acids, and the, worst, and the world's first cervical cancer vaccine. We've got a strong drug development pipeline with over 6,000 clinical trials registered in Australia in the last six years. It's around, that, that trial sector was worth around a billion dollars a year to our economy with over 450 million invested annually. Um, that's supported by a very robust, efficient and transparent regulatory framework, particularly in intellectual property, 